Hi everyone, um, today we are going to do a review of this new TV called a Samsung Zero. Now as you can see it's a uh, interesting TV because it's in portrait mode and if you're looking at this video you probably looked at other videos and the main interesting thing about this TV is that it can rotate from a portrait to a landscape mode. But um, basically I'm in Amsterdam and we bought this off Media Mark. And it's currently retailing at one six nine nine. Uh, we bought it off Media Mark because they actually have a one hundred day uh, return policy currently. And if you sign up for their newsletter, you get an extra ten euro discount. Woo! Uh, uh, currently, if you go to Samsung Promotions, if you buy this TV, they will also send you a free Samsung A forty one smartphone. And you can also apply for a 10-year screen burning warranty that is in addition to its normal warranty. So uh, we can talk about that a little bit later, but let's have a quick look at the actual hardware. It's a 43-inch uh, OLED 4K TV. It has a 4.1 uh, sound system at its base in there. Uh, when you buy it, uh, it comes in two pieces in the sense that have a look. You have to attach this stand, and there's like four screws here. Uh, there are these back covers to cover the cables here and here. And this is a two mat. It is actually a very heavy uh, TV, so you need two people to uh, pick it up. Um, there's no hand hold things in this thing, so it's actually quite tricky to actually hold it without damaging it. But you can't hold on to the actual screen itself. You have to actually have to put your hand right at the bottom and also uh, on the side. So it's a little bit cumbersome. Uh, ideally, they should have put some handles in there, but I guess they wanted to keep the lines uh, of the back nice and smooth, I guess. Now we have a look at the connectors. Okay, there are, uh, let's see if we can focus this in. There is, at the top, a normal composite uh, TV one. There is a satellite uh, cable uh, connector. There are three HDMI in, and there's an eARC one at the top. And there's also two USB um, ports at the bottom. Uh, there's a power port on this side, and there's also, I think, a Kensington uh, security lock thing there. And that's pretty much it on the back. Uh, there's also a on-off switch here, which uh, I don't think anyone ever is going to use really. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this TV. So it comes with this remote control. There's the power button. There's this uh, microphone, and this is for the voice control on Bixby. Uh, you got this one, two, three button. When you click that, that will bring up the um, on-screen uh, number pad. This is the rotate screen. Four-way direction, okay button, go back, home button, play pause. You got the volume up down, channel up down. And now you got these three um, Netflix, Prime Video, and Rakuten TV buttons. Now these three are fixed, which is a quite annoying. Uh, it's probably some kind of like product endorsement thing Samsung's got going. But you can't change these. You can't pre-program them for anything else. So these three are wasted unless you actually have a subscription for all three of these. Which I seriously doubt anyone's got all three subscriptions. But um, you never know. Some people must spend a lot of time watching TV. So let's turn this on. Okay, now... The thing that everyone wants to see is this. And you can go back again. So that's pretty cool. Now, why would anyone want this? Well, if you actually look at the way this is done, it looks like a phone. And that's exactly what I think a lot of people were using it for, social media uh, viewing. But you can mirror the screen so if you've got any Samsung type phone, 
you have to install the uh, smart things and then you can mirror your screen there you go you can mirror your screen so if you're into your social media and you want to see your social media feed on the big screen and the good thing is if you rotate it actually is it picking up no oh, wait a minute hold on let's try something else so hopefully what will happen is if you rotate the phone the phone should also rotate with it there we go So a lot of people are going to be using this for social media. Uh, I've seen it being used in like art places or as a digital uh, signboard for shops. So that's probably one of the main things that uh, people will be buying it for. But as a home consumer, would this be actually be of any use to you? Um, questionable, unless you're a millennial. A millennial. But um, the reason why we bought it is because originally we had this really big 50-inch plasma TV. And because of lockdown, we actually rearranged our living room. And because of that, we wanted to put the TV in this position here. But the problem with that was, was the TV would actually cut across the screen there. So we bought this one because it can be shoved into the corner and it can be rotated out when we need to. So let's have a look at the screen. Okay, let me talk you through the menus. Okay, uh, you come into the screen and it starts off in this position and you can log into your Samsung account if you need to. Uh, there's some notifications and a privacy choice, uh, both which can be ignored. On the right are pre-installed apps. So you got, let's have a quick look through. Uh, we're in Netherlands, so I've got Zigo. You've got Netflix, Prime Video, Apple TV, YouTube, Rakuten, Parfait, uh, loads of other things. You've got a gallery view, and that links to your Samsung account, and you can set that up as your photo gallery. You've got a basic internet browser, and I've got a PC connected up there. So every time you actually install an app and use it, it gets basically a stuck linked onto that bar. You have a portrait mode. Uh, I'll show you that later. Ambient mode. Let's go first to the settings. So you got, let me go in closer. So you've got picture mode and you can set change your picture settings. All the brightness, contrast, blah, 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 blah. But normally you can set this to automatic because this TV has got like intelligent picture sensing. So it will check the ambient lighting in your room and set the uh, brightness accordingly. And it's same with the sound. You can select the sound output. So you can connect Bluetooth speaker or you can connect a uh, audio system to it. So again, you can change a lot of the settings here. Uh, broadcast, this is just for tuning in your channels. But as we don't have terrestrial TV, we only got cable. I don't use that. Okay, you've got a general one. Uh, intelligent mode settings on. So you've got adaptive picture, active voice amplifier, adaptive sound, adaptive volume. You've got your network, you've got voice control, uh, that's for your Bixby. Um, yeah, I'll got, come back to that in a minute. Uh, set up your network, uh, basic system, time, language, device name, blah, blah. Uh, external ones, this is for when you want to connect Bluetooth um, keyboard and mouse, which I suggest is a very good idea. And I've actually got one of these little things with a trackpad and this is good if you want to browse, use the browser or just want to enter uh, stuff and search for it. Apple AirPlay, I don't have Apple. Eco solution, so if you want to do some power saving, uh, accessibility, smart features and reset. You've got support, 
and got software updates, uh, basic how to clean your TV. Uh, you've got e-manual, which contains everything. Remote management. If you ever need Samsung uh, customer service, you can give them access to remotely control your TV and access the features. And again, I'm not sure how often you're going to need that. And you've got your terms of privacy statements. Okay, so that's the settings. Then you've got your sources. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong button. Okay, so first up on the left is your TV, Terrestrial TV. Uh, I've got Zigo, I've got a PC connected, I've got a Sony Blu ray. Uh, this remote access, uh, you can use this if you want to connect to a remote PC in your house. Um, you got I haven't managed to get this working though. It might just be some issue with my own network, but I will play with that at some point. Uh, you've got screen sharing. I think this also only works with uh, Samsung PCs because I don't see that screen sharing wireless option in my own PC. And you've got a couple of other apps here. And you can add cloud services if you wish. And you've got a connection guide, and this teaches you how to connect to uh, your TV boxes, cable TV, and a universal remote. Now, this is a universal remote control. It can control a lot of other app, uh, basically boxes that are connected through HDMI. So when you first go in, so this is a Zigo box. This is a Samsung uh, TV box. It's warming up. Is the toner turn on? Yeah, so you can get its power on and its connection guide. So we power that on. Let's turn that sideways. The, that will set up the TV. And if you want to connect to the Blu ray player, that's also been set up to start up. Hopefully. Is it going to start up or not? This is one of the things I found. The universal remote is not particularly reliable. Yep, it's not going to start up. Okay, so let me show you how this actually is meant to be set up. Okay, let's go back. Okay, I just had to turn that on separately. And this only actually turns it on. It doesn't actually allow you to control the Blu-ray player. So what you have to do to connect to it is, actually, let me delete it first. and reset it up, make sure and delete it, yep. So it goes new devices, and then you will select if it's a satellite or cable box, a home theater, a set-top box, game controller, or Blu-ray disc player. Now this is a Blu-ray disc player, and it's directly connected, and it's a Sony. Okay and it picks it up there. Click OK. And then it will ask you to do a power test. Now this is meant to restart the machine. It doesn't do it. Say no, so it goes to a different signal. And you're basically running through this a few times to see if it works until you get to the point where it says, okay, I can't figure it out myself, so tell me what model it is. So this one is a BDV. Oh, Jay, what is it? Uh, BDV E380. BDV hyphen 
E three eighty. Type that wrong, didn't I? Where's the hyphen gone? Do it. Okay. Hmm. I haven't picked it up. Did I type my in right? Yeah, should be right. So let's power test this. There you go, it's worked. So you can see the screen's gone bank. And you see the machine restarting. Yeah, let me just give it a few seconds. Yeah, then we've power on again. There you go, it's powered on. So you say yes. See, so yeah, at that point, when you turn the TV on and you point at the source, it should pick up the Blu ray player. But I'm finding you pretty unreliable because uh, every so often it will cut out and I have to reset it up. So I'm not sure if that's down to uh, maybe a cable or the way I set it up. But um, yeah, or maybe it just needed an update. Okay, so those are the sources. Okay, that's a search feature if you want to search through any of the uh, guides. You got the apps. Okay, there's a lot of apps you can choose from, and they're all pretty uh, obscure. That I don't know what the hell they are. Most of them, never seen them, never heard of them. Like Opera to play, Calm Radio, Sweet TV. There's a Facebook Watch. I guess that's just like a YouTube app thing. And this might be down to your geographic location, uh, what's installed. So you've got YouTube, that's installed. You've got Videoland, uh, Disney+, Plus, Spotify, yeah, install that. Local news channels. You've got some other sort of like uh, group apps. So these are all radio ones. And I've never heard any of the radio stations. Hotelradio.fm. Apps to kill time. So more, oh, UFC, maybe, Porsche TV, Audi, Google Play Movies, some Flying Fish games. Smart View enabled, well, whatever those are. News and weather, weather channel, channel News Asia, Bloomberg. Investor Pro, Gallery, MP3 Quran, C Colors, Smart uh, Satellite TV. And basically a load of other apps that you're never going to use, except maybe one or two of them. Uh, there are games. Uh, forget the games. They're all pretty unplayable. But you're playing them with the remote control, so you're not really going to exactly enjoy playing with these and all of the games are yeah nothing of any interest if you're going to play a game on this tv you might as well just uh mirror uh mirror the screen of your phone and play angry bird birds education uh kids programming kitty tv medcram for doctors so Anyway, so basically the apps are all kind of pointless. Uh, you, <laughs> you're never going to use any of them pretty much apart from maybe YouTube or Spotify. Uh, I don't actually understand. Uh, one of the first things my daughter said when she saw this was it looks like a giant phone. And I just wonder why didn't it just give it a full Android OS so you can actually uh, use it as a phone. And I think they're missing a trick. They should have installed a webcam actually into this uh, box so you could use it as for web processing. Uh, I think it'd be a really good uh, app for that. And the other reason why I think they should put a webcam is because they have this. This is ambient mode. And the idea behind this is that the TV is always on. And you're basically using it as... You're going to have it as a, a piece of art, I guess. Or like as a clock. So you can set this. Like the screen's gone dimmer. 
and you can have this on permanently. And it basically is a screensaver. And yeah, you use the clock, it tells you the temperature and the weather. Or you could have a piece of artwork and have it as a kind of picture frame. So let's have a look at some of the artwork. So this will be on constantly as your screensaver and you can, there are some settings, you can change the brightness if you want it brighter. And this is where that Samsung promotion thing at the beginning I spoke about, a 10 year burning warranty actually makes sense. If you actually do choose to have this on all the time and you just leave that on your screen all the time, uh, yeah, a lot of you might be concerned about burning over time. So. It, if you get this, definitely apply for the uh, 10 year warranty. Uh, definitely worth having. Oh, one of the things that annoyed me is that if you look at the promotional adverts for this TV, you see it running, being pushed around a lot. Uh, the wheels are separate. You have to buy them separate, which I don't understand. They should have just included them into the actual box. And as of print right now, they cost 99 euros just for a set of wheels. In America, they're like 50, the UK is like 69 pounds, but uh, in the Netherlands, it's 99 euros. And I think that's a rip off just for wheels. And especially as all of the promotional uh, videos for this actually show it being just gently glided around the floor. So, uh, the screen is good. I won't have to explain too much about that. You can actually see it for yourself. And the sound quality is actually very good as well. So, uh, issues. This is a beautifully designed TV. It looks like a centerpiece. It could be, uh, you know, it looks like a piece of artwork. Right now, the way it's done, if there was no reflective glare, it looks like it's a piece of artwork or like a photo. It's that good. Only thing is, I don't know about you, but the way this is designed is meant to stand on the floor. And previously, if you have a look over here, this was our cabinet. And in our TV cabinet, we have a Blu-ray player, an Xbox, the satellite TV box. We've got a karaoke machine. We've got old Wii. We've got a, a PC. Uh, we've got a Pandora box. And we've got all of these things that need to be connected to this TV. And if you have a look at the way this is set up, this is crap. This just looks all wrong. Like this is not the cabinet for this TV. So you actually have to think about where are you going to install all of your boxes? See, we're going to have to buy a shelf and stick it behind the TV. But if you do that, then if you think about it from this angle, we're going to have a shelf coming out here and then the TV is going to be standing proud in front of it. And again, that's not ideal. So you actually have to think about before I buy this TV, where am I going to put it and how am I going to connect all my boxes up? And if you're thinking about, okay, well, I could just uh, custom build um, some kind of cupboard. You have to factor that into the cost of this thing because you can't just buy a piece of a, a piece of a TV cabinet that will work. Uh, I had a look and originally I wanted to get a... Uh, a server box, you know, thin metal one that would sit in that corner and that would fit everything in. But even the cheapest, like a uh, server box style that would actually fit all the AV stuff is about 600 uh, euros. So again, you have to factor that into the cost. So you have to think who is actually going to buy this TV and uh, how are they going to use it? And basically, how are they going to set up all of their audio visual stuff? So um, anyway, this is my review of the Samsung Zero. Uh, overall, I like it. Picture quality is excellent. Sound quality is good. Um, it is very cool the way it just switches back and forwards. And we can connect to it using mirroring. Oh yeah, one thing, if you've got more than one person that wants a mirror, uh, you have to set up uh, additional accounts and then you have to sign into the additional accounts, which it's a bit annoying sometimes because you've got two-factor authentication on your Samsung account. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more cumbersome to actually sign in.
But anyway, hope you liked the review. If you've got any questions about this set, uh, let me know. Otherwise, see you next time. Bye-bye.